Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Time Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Before I discuss today's case, I'd like to mention my Christian Suspense book series, which is Never As It Seems. The first book in the series is available on Amazon and you can read it on any device on the Kindle app for free. If reading isn't your thing, then no worries. There is now a Never As It Seems weekly podcast, which posts new episodes every Friday if you love listening to audiobooks or podcasts. Not only that, but I do have another book series, which is the Juliet Clark book series, which is about a Haitian-American teen sleuth who happens to be a successful true crime YouTuber. The first book in the series is titled Murderer at Heart. The links will be in the description box below if you are interested. Today, I'll be discussing a requested case of the unsolved disappearance of Daniel Robinson. As I researched this case, and I kid you not, this had to have been the most unusual, weirdest disappearance case that I've ever stumbled across. And I have no idea why it's not getting all of this national attention. Like sadly, it seems like Daniel isn't getting the help he needs to be found, but that's not stopping his family from searching for the answers which they're looking for. Now, I encourage you all to do your own research with this case and not to just look at my video for all of the information. Here we go. Daniel Robinson was born on January 14th, 1997, which is actually pretty crazy because that's like two days, exactly two days before I was born. Daniel was born on South Carolina and he was born to parents David and Melissa Robinson. He does have siblings. Uh, their names are David Jr., Savisha, Leticia, and Talia. Daniel was described as someone who was ambitious, uh, an intelligent guy who, you know, even made it to the honor roll. He was pretty competitive, and despite only what having one hand, he still worked hard at achieving his goals. Daniel was musical. He played so many instruments. In 2021, Daniel is 24 at this time, and shortly before he disappeared, um, people in his life have been stating that he was acting pretty strange. And for example, he was texting his sister about an emergency, but he didn't answer when she called. So there was this other time when he went to his sister's apartment and stayed silent, not saying anything for 30 minutes, then left his sister's place. One time he told his dad about this woman that he was in love with, but this woman was a mystery to his dad because his dad had never met or even heard of this woman. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and mention this woman later on in the video. On June 23rd, 2021, Daniel is working as a geologist in Arizona and you know he leaves his work site but before then according to his co-workers daniel was still acting pretty weird saying things that didn't make sense like asking his one co-worker kenneth if he wanted to rest at his home in phoenix and either i don't really get that um question because it, i guess it's like either kenneth didn't live in phoenix or daniel just said it out of the blue once Daniel abruptly left the work site, he was never seen again. And not to sound rude, but why would you allow your coworker who seems to be out of it to leave? But again, I guess in Kenneth's point of view, you know, Kenneth was pretty new to the job, so he didn't really have that type of close connection to Daniel. Because I guess it's like pretty easy to say what I would do in that situation, but again, you know, when you're in that situation, I guess you really don't know how you would react. So later on that day, you know, Kenneth does do the right thing and he tries calling Daniel, but Daniel doesn't answer texts from Kenneth or even texts from his own family. So Kenneth is getting pretty worried and he starts looking for Daniel, but Kenneth can't find Daniel anywhere. And once again, you know, he had to have him notify the family. The family was, um, pretty much texting Daniel, but he was not getting back to them. 
So the family obviously is getting worried and the police are called but the police tell the family that they have to wait 12 hours because Daniel's an adult and he can leave whenever he'd like to. But again, you know, Daniel isn't really acting like himself. He's been acting pretty unusual lately. So, I mean, it sounds like somebody who would be put on high alert. But again, the police just decided to go ahead and wait. They decided to wait and wait and wait for 12 hours. So when they decided to, you know, after the 12 hours was up, they decided to go ahead and look for Daniel. And they were looking for Daniel for hours, but he was nowhere to be seen. And of course, the family is understandably worried. Like, you have your son who's missing in another state. Like, Daniel's father had to drive all the way from South Carolina to Arizona to help find his son. And, you know, when his dad arrived at Arizona, the police asked Daniel's dad to check Daniel's social media. And I'm not really sure why the police couldn't really check Daniel's social media themselves, but oh well, they, they asked Daniel's dad to look at it, and Daniel's dad did see that the Instagram was deleted. Not to say that Daniel's whole Instagram page was deleted, like all of his photos were deleted on the Instagram. So again, you have Daniel who was interested in a woman, and he claimed that he was in love with her, and police found out about her, and you know, when they went to go ahead and reach out to this woman, they found out that Daniel told her that he was in love with her, but, you know, since they barely knew each other, like, you have this man who you don't really know, he's in your place, and he's telling you that he loves you, she was getting pretty uncomfortable and told Daniel to get out and never contact her again, and he ended up granting her wishes. Now it's July 19th, 2021, almost a whole month after Daniel vanished. Daniel's Jeep was found near a ravine, damaged and overturned. The weird thing is that Daniel's belongings like his cell phone, keys, and clothes were either inside of the car or some were laid outside of the car. But again, there's no Daniel. This piece of information is pretty freaky because I recently spoke about Jelani Day's case and even his belongings, like his clothes, were found in a car, but he wasn't found in the car. And of course, you know that Jelani was found deceased, but I just don't understand, like, what's with missing men and their clothes or belongings being left in their car? Despite Daniel's, like, all of Daniel's belongings being in his car, they stated that they didn't believe it was foul play. But, you know, Daniel, he wasn't found inside of that car. And I can't stress this enough, like, all of his stuff were inside. If it wasn't foul play, it was definitely something that should concern them. The thing is that Daniel even left bottles of water inside of his car. And this is Arizona, like, this is a desert. You need water to survive in a desert. Like, why would he just decide just up and leave and say, oh, I don't need any water, um, I'm good in this desert heat. I think I'll be fine. Like, no, like, something is not right in the 100 Acre Woods. Now, Daniel's family felt like foul play was involved. And if it was, especially with Daniel's state of mind, this really puts Daniel in a vulnerable position. A private investigator is hired by the family who, you know, when he started looking into it, he found out that with the car and the info I'm about to share is just, you know, info I gathered from the private investigator's statement, statements. Like, I'm not really that good with car info, but this is what I found. So the investigator found out that Daniel had a seatbelt on, the airbag was on, someone turned on the ignition like 46 times, but there was also an additional 11 miles on the car after the crash, which means that Daniel or somebody else was driving 11 miles after the crash and I guess decided to crash the car again, making it turn over. It's really sketchy. Later in July, on the 31st to be exact, there were remains found of a human skull near the crash site but this did not belong to Daniel, but I do pray that this individual's remains 
who they found would be identified to bring peace to their loved ones. With so many months going by and Daniel not being found, the FBI was asked to help out, but they haven't agreed to. Despite all of this weird, sketchy info that was given to them, and now the family is still working extremely hard to find Daniel, but they do question if he's still with us. If you do think that you'd like to go ahead and help out with um, this investigation, I do know that there are petitions and GoFundMe's, and I'll actually go ahead and post those links in the description box below. Now, if you do have any information at all, like be a snitch, call 911, or the Buckeye Police Department, which is 623-349-6400. And there is a $130,000 reward. It's almost been a full year since Daniel has been missing. And I'm praying that he can be found and that his family can get the answers to their questions. Like no matter what happened to Daniel after he drove off from work, his family still needs to know where he is and I once again like I do pray that they can go ahead and have that peace of you know finding out where he's located right now but the God that I serve the God of the Bible is an all-seeing God and he knows exactly where Daniel is I thank you all for taking the time of your day to watch this video if you did like this video please feel free to hit the like button if you have any thoughts on this case at all please leave your thoughts in the comments section if you'd like to see more videos from me please feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video if there's a specific true crime case that you'd like me to cover go ahead and let me know I will see y'all for next True Crime Tuesdays, and I will talk to y'all later.